first started this really awesome Pinterest recipe and then you got to the part and it was like, use your meat thermometer. Or it was like, put in this sprig of some crazy spice that you do not have. And this is the part in the recipe where I just say, uh, yep, skip, next. And I'm guessing that's how you feel about working out right now. I am so proud of you for even watching this video because it is really confusing. Like all the experts are just saying all these crazy things and you finally get the motivation to work out and then you're just scared to death you're doing something wrong that is going to make things worse and you're like, what? <laughs> forget it, screw it, I just, I'm not going to do anything. Watch this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what I teach my um, clients that I work with as a pelvic floor physical therapist what to do when it comes to crunches and planks postpartum and then you are going to feel so confident you are going to go into any workout whether it is postpartum specific or not and feel like you are doing all the right things so the reason there's so much confusion about planks and crunches is because when you go into the research which i've done a little bit for you and i'm actually going to link the articles that i am you know quoting to you or whatever in the description below but basically there are there is some evidence like Julie Weeby she is a guru of um like physical therapist if i if i'm like oh i wonder what julie weeby would do it would be like i wonder what you know i wonder what richard simmons would do no that that wasn't really a great example he's not really cool anymore anyways it, she's a guru of pelvic floor physical therapy and she would say Yes, you should be planking. In fact, you will not heal your diastasis completely if you're not planking. However, you need to be able to maintain fascial tension. And this is where it gets confusing because as someone that's like, I'm just trying to work out, you're like, what is fascial tension? I'm going to explain that in just a minute. But then there's other research that says people that crunched and people that didn't crunch, uh, they both had good results and healed. And then there's some research that says um, if you crunched, you actually made your gap bigger. And so you didn't heal your diastasis recti. And it's like, oh my gosh, what in the heck am I supposed to do? So since the research is so mixed also, I kind of sifted through like what was different about the people that it worked for and the people that it didn't work for. Basically, the bottom line is you can crunch and you can plank after you've had babies if you can do it correctly. And the way you'll know you're doing it correctly is if you're able to do it keeping your core tight and flat versus a doming. So I'm going to show you some real video of me. So here's the backstory. I do have diastasis recti. My last son was enormous. Well, for me, he was nine pounds, three ounces and it felt like giant. My belly got so big. And despite my best efforts, I still have diastasis recti um, right at my belly button when I do the test to measure for diastasis recti. Link above to a video I did about how to measure for diastasis diastasis recti and I'll put it at the end as well so you can watch that and figure out if you have diastasis recti but I have about three fingers right at my belly button and so you can actually see in this video I'm going to show you that as I crunch up here I am activating my core and it's relatively flat but in this video I am not activating my core and you can see that things are protruding through that gap in the middle of my stomach that is the difference between crunching with good core activation versus not good core activation. So the bottom line here is you need to be very intentional, holding it nice and tight, keeping everything contracted and in. And if you can do a crunch and keep everything together, keep on crunching. But if you hit 12 crunches and it's no longer held together, then you need to stop and move on to something else. With the plank, the same thing. You need to be able to maintain that tension. I'm not going to show you a video because right now I have so much saggy belly skin that you're not even going to be able to tell if it's my diastasis or my saggy belly skin. <laughs> um, but best if you have someone kind of watch this or hold and feel it for you. But if you notice that doming or coning, that bulging out in the middle, it's too hard. So there are lots of modifications that you can do. I still have diastasis. I can't always control it, not for a full minute in a regular plank position, but I can modify the plank. And so I want to show you guys a few videos of how I would modify a plank so that you guys can feel like even if your workout includes planks, you can still make it through the whole workout without a problem. When you go to do a modified plank, go ahead and elevate your surface. Here I'm using a toy box. You can use a chair. You could use a countertop. 
the higher the surface, the easier it is on your core. You want to make sure you're exhaling as you zip up and tighten your core muscles, and then when you inhale, you're letting things go. You can also add shoulder taps to make it a little bit more challenging for your core without having all the forces of gravity on your core muscles in a traditional plank position. I personally think that elevating is a little bit safer for your core than just using your knees because you're still requiring a lot of those same elements out of your core muscles. So go ahead and start on an elevated surface and lower as you feel like your core is getting stronger. As promised, here is a link to that video about how to measure for diastasis recti. Feel free to comment in this video or that video if you're like, hmm, I'm still not sure if I was doing that right because I really do answer all the comments that you guys leave me. Uh, so please comment and I am happy to help you make sure you can spot if you have diastasis recti or not.